guys, I'm Karishma Karer and welcome to the Owl Markers. Uh, we have with us today Olivia, Olivia Kuang, the Chief Brand Officer at Odma Pige and we're here at the Buy Watch Week. Olivia, welcome to the Owl Markers and thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. Um, I noticed you've done a lot recently with um, Royal Oak in terms of gem setting, in terms of warmer dials. Um, is there a particular direction the brand is going with this? It's true, there is a particular direction. I have to say, first of all, hello. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for welcoming me. I think there's much more than a direction, a real willing of the company to actually uh, talk to women. I think it's been part of our DNA since the foundation of the house. And if you look at actually the 20s, uh, the small watches that were made at this time for women, actually pushed us on Marpiguet to do like really little mechanisms. So the fact that we have women in our radar mm -hmm. as from the beginning of Marpiguet, it's not new. Uh, and you've seen all the collaboration that we've made recently, but one of the women I would like to mention is Jacqueline Zimier, mm -hmm. who actually developed a wire look in 76 mm -hmm. for a special size for women. So it's not a direction, it's not new, it's just that we actually revitalized the roots uh, and yes, we want to talk more to women, not only with special collections, but probably by putting women at the core of everything that we are doing within the company, thinking about their willing, their vision of the world, what their contributions are. Um, and if you speak about watches, I think there are special sizes, it's true, that fits some wrists and some others not. I'm actually wearing a 41 millimeter, uh, which is not a watch that 10 years ago was supposed to be for women. But there's no size really, there's no design really. There's, I think it's a matter of personality of the woman and what she wants to wear. Um, and yes, some of them like gemstones, some of them like the frosted finition that we launched a few yeah. years ago with Carolina Bucci. The, the frosted gold watch is stunning. Which is really something different because it's not only about stones and so on, it's much more about finishings, play of light materials, which is really true to Audemars Piguet. Mm -hmm. Actually, is a matter that women really love as well. Right. So, yes, we talk to women. Yes, we have new collections, new models. Mm -hmm. But again, what is truly important is that women are always in our heart and in our mind. Mm -hmm. And so we will talk to many women today. Yes. Yeah. And that's very interesting because generically, Audemars Piguet is looked at as a brand, a very masculine brand. Yes. You know, the watches are relatively large. Mm -hmm. um, especially the offshores. Uh, when it came to women's watches, till, till I think last year when this whole revolution about you know, feminism and the watch industry just completely took off, uh, where brands have now stopped categorizing as watches. Uh, with, yes. So watches as a woman's watch, as a man's watch, because like you yourself is are wearing 41 millimeter. Mm -hmm. So what do you think are the criteria for the segregation? And, and I don't believe in segregation. And what I usually say is that we are lucky enough to be in the company who actually do believe in talents from where they can be, women, men, whoever, I would say. Uh, my CEO, my boss actually appointed me three years ago and I joined the family three years ago. I was the first woman to join the executive committee. And since then we have our chief financial officer and then we appointed as well women in the world of the market. We do, we do believe that it's not a question of women versus men, but the fact that we are actually different. We actually bring different things to the company and the brand. Right. And so it's a question of vision again. And that's something that is not only true to the industry, the watchmaking industry, and what came out with those, I would say, unisex collections yeah. or whatever. It's more a question again of vision of the world and what people can bring to the, brand, to the brands. Yeah. So it's, uh, but we are committed at an Omapiget, definitely to involve and invite more women in our world because it's definitely part of who we are. So in terms of uh, the collections of Adman Pige, uh, since we're talking about women, a lot of women used to look into the military watches. Yes. Uh, but now you are coming you have come up with some interesting variations with the Royal Oak and then there is the Offshore. So these are basically the, the roots uh, I would say of Adman Pige. Is there any special focus in any direction for the year? Like maybe a Royal Oak for the year or Women, are you focusing you no, in general? Like, are you general. focusing on any collection? So it's it's you know we are going to celebrate next year the 50 years of the Wild Oak. Yes, so it's going to be a big kind of major milestone. Right. So all uh, this is all this is building up to the 50 years of the Wild Oak. The, 
it's not building up to the futures of the royal. It's going to be a milestone, definitely, yeah. because we're going to celebrate, like within the family, you have a birthday, you blow candles. Yeah. So we're going to blow candles. Yeah. But what is truly as well uh, important for us is that it's not only about Payok, it's about the philosophy and the philosophy of the company and the family came actually with Wayalu born in 72, but we have many watches before. Right. So Wayalu is not like the beginning of the story of the market. Right. We've been living with without Wayalu more than with Wayalu. Right. But it's true that today, Audemars Piguet is really one known for its iconic Wayalu. Right. And I think it's definitely because it's it's been part of cultural identities of many people. It's really being anchored into culture in many, many countries. Uh, and this is the spirit behind the family's company, Audemars Piguet, that we celebrate behind the Wayalu. And then from this Royal Oak, we actually design more like controversial designs yeah. with the Royal Oak Offshore, yeah. who was nicknamed at its born in 93 like the Beast, the Beast. Was, like, yeah. huge one. Yeah. And then with the Royal Oak concept, mm -hmm. and then we launched actually now three years ago mm -hmm. this Code 1159 collection, which is a kind of different baby, mm -hmm. which talking definitely probably to a different audience. Uh, but we are now many, many lovers of Royal Oak who actually don't like Code 1159. And we have many lovers of Code 1159 who don't like Royal Oak. But the common point is really the philosophy behind Omar Piguet, the brand and the family. So you would actually fell in love with Code 1159 and you don't like Royal Oak design and it's fine, you're part of the family. So just to tell you that there is no direction we, we don't want to put the emphasis more on Royal Oak or Code 59 or Royal Oak. We want to leave, actually make our baby leave yeah. in the family and express themselves because we do believe that we are many people in the world who actually can be in love with some designs and not with others. So we just need actually to gather within, within family of Marpillé different types of personalities. But there's no way we're going to say we're going to focus on Royal Oak. It's true that we're going to build this one as a newborn, mm -hmm. and so the idea is to, to really build Code Cod Event 59 as a real good franchise of the brand. We do have many projects with this one, playing on materials, finishes, uh, so everything that actually been part of the Marpillier history to the beginning, we're going to need to apply to this new one as well, mm -hmm. and so we're going to have a lot of fun. So the AP, the, the poor look is not going to get uh, preferential child treatment? Definitely not. Sometimes what happens is that the watch actually becomes bigger than the brand. Do you yes. think that's the case with the Royal Oak? That's a pretty good question. I, I, th I think it's today at this level. Right. right. If you know, and mine is in charge of the brand, so we're doing and we're conducting surveys. Yeah. So it's true that the Royal Oak is, I would say, well known at the same level as the mm -hmm. And hopefully the fact that we launched it, Code 1159, worked on the old market brand and so it helped us being well known for really what is the company, the family, the values behind it instead of focusing on a special product which was the Royal Oak. Right. So I think it's going to be better balanced now. Um, I want to talk about one of the controversial, I'm going to call it controversial because it was on social media it was controversial, the Black Panther. Yes. Um, interesting timepiece and from what I've read there's another one in the making. It's true. Where, uh, Rumors have it that the Panther is actually going to be outside the watch. You're giving me no reaction to that, so no, thank you. <laughs> I will remain silent. So, uh, what was the idea behind having a collaboration with a comic, comic book character? It's 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 not new. Again, in the 30s, in the watch industry, we had like many comic yeah. heroes coming on yeah. watches, like Mickey, Mickey Mouse, Mouse yeah. Donald, and so on. Yeah. So, it's not new within the watch industry. What is what was at the beginning of the story was the fact that as a true luxury one, we want to make people dream, right? And today it's true that the heroes of today are more the Marvel, like in the 30s it was more Mickey Mouse. Right. So it's just a kind of reinvention of what a luxury brand was doing at this time and is doing today, is put actually a Marpigé together with culture and heroes. So it can be controversial, but when you think about it, it's a cultural act. Mm -hmm. And beyond the fact that it was a piece of art in terms of technical and so on. Uh, and I would add something that was really important as well for me, is the values that we convey behind that. So if you think about Black Panther mm -hmm. itself, it's a question of family, 
really anchored in their roots, strong ancient families and background, mm -hmm. definitely oriented towards the forward thinking, with a sister in charge of this laboratory, okay. and fighting for equality and fighting for strong and good values. Uh, and last but not least, really anchored into nature. So when you think about all this, yeah. this is the same values that we convey to Marie. We are still the, the latest family-owned company right. in watchmaking, definitely anchored into nature. Mm -hmm. Watchmaking would not have been invented if we were not being in the Valley de Joux looking at the sky and so on, and the stars. The manufacturer is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Uh, and, and you see all those type of values are really us. So it's true that we went through a certain controversy on social media, but it's funny the way you say it, because when you actually measure social media, it was just a slight part of it. Yeah. That was a kind of negative yeah. tone, a tone of voice, and it was really the one watchmaking, yeah. watchmaking universe. Go outside us, it was a huge success because it touched people. Yeah. And because it was, again, a combination of design and mastery, so definitely true to a map game when you think about watchmaking, yeah. but conveying many, many more values. Yeah. And so it touched many people. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what the next one looks like. I always say, if uh, if my rumors are correct, that is that would be really interesting <laughs> to see the pattern. I cannot say anything, <laughs> otherwise I would be like, kill. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, okay, coming to India, uh, I know uh, globally Automapigi has consolidated uh, points of sales yes. and you, you've got uh, limited points of sales now, uh, strategically done. Uh, any further plans for India right now? Not for the moment, so it's true that we're still in the way of consolidating retail. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea behind that is really simple, we just want to be closer to our clients. Mm -hmm. So we began that story when François Ribenami has survived at the the CEO of the company, it's not done yet, so it's not finished yet. And what is truly important is the way we are actually going to structure retail in a way. Uh, it's, I would say, a different kind of angle. Uh, you will still have like boutiques, okay, in the streets, and so on, for people who don't know the brand, or people who want to listen or hear about the brand. And you will have more and more AP houses, so you probably know that concept. Yeah. But AP houses is a, is a, is a kind of home. It's, it's, it's the Le Brassure home outside Le Brassure. Okay. So it's in different cities in the world. We have those AP houses where we actually welcome our guests, clients, audience, family, whoever. Well, not whoever, <laughs> but people we invite there. Uh, and we actually, it's all about the story, all about their lives, all about culture, all about the Marpigay, but all about people in a way and the way we want to connect with people. So it's a kind of different place versus a shop. Uh, so this is the direction we take, it's not finished yet, so we will have more AP houses in the future. Uh, we're currently here in uh, the Emirates and it's true that we actually plan to have one here, so we're trying to find a place. Um, don't know about timing yet, because we will find it and then we will actually take the time to do it properly, as we always do. So. The transition into having our own retail is not done yet. There is another thing that is happening and that will touch India, is actually the fact that we do believe that we don't, somehow we will have people traveling around the world and touching the clients without having a boutique. Okay. okay. We do feel that it's a question of connection between people and sometimes look at us, we're not in a boutique and we can talk about it Right. The same thing can happen everywhere in the world. My CEO used to say, I can sell a watch and I can present a watch even without being in a boutique. And even me, I was used to actually present some products without having neither the product right. nor a boutique. It's all about conversation and touching people. So we can do that. So that's going to happen definitely in India. Yeah, I'm so sure. we're going to have yeah. like people going there, but no need of a boutique. Yeah, also, it's all not bigger. You don't really need to do much to sell them. India is such a friendly for the watches. Uh, yeah, the only question I get asked is when am I going to get my uh, steel oil when they produce some more? <laughs> well, we will produce more next year. Oh, anyway. you will? You are yes, well, we increased, we increased uh, capacity of production. That's why we you, you already seen the Seniors, which yeah. is a new, actually, fact, well, a new factory. We actually yeah. increase our capacity. We will never go up like in the sky, yeah. because that's not who we are. Mm -hmm. But the idea is to say, yes, we will increase capacity of production, but there will, I think there will always be a kind of gap between yeah. The demand and what we can produce and 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 we won't make any compromise on the quality 
So I'm sorry about all those people who actually <laughs> cannot really get their watches yet, but it's it's really something that is crucial to us. So we'll take the time to do it properly. And we look forward to it. Thank it's you pleasure. so much for being with us, Olivia. Thank you for being with the Hour Markers. And uh, hopefully we'll see uh, one of your team members in India soon. And go and come back with us in Le Brasserie. Definitely. For sure. Thank, thank you so much.